Coming out of his anti-Semitic Thanksgiving dinner, Donald Trump sort of distanced himself from Kanye West, kind of condemned him a little bit, although he implied that nothing anti-Semitic happened at that actual dinner. But you might have noticed that even in those attempts to distance himself from Kanye, he didn't have much to say about Nick Fuentes, the possibly even more outspoken anti-Semite racist, homophobe, and misogynist. And it turns out that was not an oversight, that was by design. Uh, people in his orbit are saying he's scared to criticize this weirdo troll. He's apparently refu repeatedly refused to disavow Nick Fuentes after they spoke at Mar-a-Lago. His uh, advisors had been telling him uh, that he needed to do that, but he's afraid that he might alienate a section of his base. Which, I mean, that says a lot, really, because this guy, Nick Fuentes, is considered fringe by other weirdo radicals. Donald Trump takes a look at that and says, that's my base. I'm not saying anti-Semites and misogynists are his base. He's saying that that's his base, bear that in mind. He ultimately made clear to his team that he fundamentally did not want to criticize Fuentes. A product of his dislike of confrontation, we'll return to that in just a second, and his anxiety that it might antagonize a devoted part of his base. And he became more entrenched in his obstinance, the more he was urged to do so. That last sentence, I buy, I don't buy that he knows what most of those words mean, but I buy that he would do that. I love though that they try to claim that part of why he didn't want to condemn him was his dislike of confrontation. What are you talking about? He loves attacking people, he loves smearing people. That's his favorite thing to do. Just not when it's an outspoken anti-Semite where doing that criticism would potentially make other racists and anti-Semites have a problem with him. So it's a weird approach, Conscious, what do you think? Um, conservative contradictions that we always see, you know, textbook. On one end, you was able to literally uh, embolden your base by being confrontational. And now you have selective moral outrage to say you don't like confrontation. Now it's giving real, real slick, like uh, I don't want to piss off particular individuals because I might need the affirmation later on. Yeah, and bear in mind that it's been a little bit since Donald Trump was embroiled in a massive anti-Semitism scandal. He's had little ones because every couple of months he tells Jewish Americans that they don't respect and love Israel enough, which is super weird. Um, but back in the day, you might recall that when he was endorsed by David Duke, he was like, I don't know David Duke. I, 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 I like, I don't know who he is. Who am I to condemn him? And you know, when the Nazis were uh, were marching and Heather Hare ended up getting killed by one of them, you know, there's fine people on both sides. So that was like half a decade ago at this point. And you might think that gearing up for his second presidential run. He might have learned something or maybe evolved a little bit, but it's pretty much the same strategy as before. It's I don't want to I don't want to make the, the the crazies hate me, you know, to the proud boys, I guess, stand back and stand by or whatever. As, as much as everyone on that side seems to think of him as some sort of alpha strongman, he is always held in the grip of his base, terrified that he might turn them off. Um, and uh, I don't know, now with DeSantis as a potential opponent, th this might actually really hurt him because DeSantis is gonna try to present himself as more reasonable. And Donald Trump seems to be playing right into that strategy. What do you think? Yeah, he definitely playing into the strategy. We got a lot of div uh, divisiveness and disavowing of the quote unquote unity that we saw the red wave was able to carry the past two or three years. I think that uh, Trump and the way that he's kind of dealing with a lot of the, the the newer issues, it shows, you know, again, the term I love to use, conservative contradictions. On one end, people that love Trump, they say, hey, the reason why we love Trump is because he don't take nothing from nobody. It's because he's unapologetic and because he always does what's on his mind and he does what he feels and he doesn't care about the consequences. But on one other end, Every time it comes to disavowing white supremacists or doing something with anti-Semites, he does care about what the white supremacists or the anti-Semites feel. And to me, that right there is the pure illustration of you say one thing and you literally do the opposite of what you said you're gonna do. Yeah. What you yeah. say you do. Yeah, the first part is just branding at that point. 
It's him wanting to seem strong, wanting to seem alpha, but that's not actually how he's acting. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.